Good afternoon and welcome to our Oak Bend Medical Center Happy Hour podcast. My name is Donna and I am your host. I am very excited to introduce our guests today as we speak about traveling safely during the holidays. Dr. Joe Anzaldua has been practicing medicine in the Sugarland area since 1985. He has been with Oak Bend Medical Group since its inception. He is board certified in family practice and is a fellow with the American Academy of Family Practice. Currently, along with his private practice, he is medical director of emergency medical services for the cities of Sugarland, Stafford, and Missouri City. He has been appointed to serve as health authority for the cities of Stafford and Missouri City, Texas primarily to serve as a consultant to deal with the COVID-19 pandemic. He has also served in many other capacities and appointments over the years. He is a member of the Houston Symphony Chorus and an avid cyclist, an amazing physician with a passion for patients and good health care. Welcome, Dr. Anzaldua. Well, thank you for having me. We are needing so much information on covid You know, everybody says it's dying down, but holidays are coming. And is it safe to travel during the pandemic? Well, before I give you my answer, I want to talk to you about what uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci, one of the lead members of the Trump administration's White House uh, Corona Task Force, recently said about holiday travel, at least for this season. He said that Thanksgiving gatherings, even small gatherings, may accelerate the spread of the coronavirus possibly leading to a surge of COVID-19 cases, possibly increasing hospitalizations, and even increasing deaths. He emphasized that we uh, should, uh, as we approach cooler weather this fall and winter, that we need to practice preventative measures such as social distancing, wearing masks, and washing hands, as these become even more important now. He did recommend that at least for this Thanksgiving season, that people reconsider traveling out of town especially if people are using public transportation like like air travel, for instance. He also recommended avoiding uh, indoor social gatherings, even small ones, especially if it involves non-household individuals or family members that are over the age of of 70 or have medical conditions that could predispose them to the coronavirus. So while there is no zero risk for either the spreading or contracting of the SARS-CoV-2, which is a virus that causes the COVID-19 pandemic. Traveling during the pandemic is still possible, but we have to take safety precautions to reduce the risk of viral transmission. So if you have symptoms, please avoid traveling if at all possible. If you recently tested positive for the virus or have been exposed to someone with confirmed COVID-19, travel should be avoided or at least delayed. Is it possible, because we are gonna have some people as we see I even see out in the public decide not to wear their mask or or not to do something. Um, Is it possible to find out if people are adamant about traveling? Is it spreading in their final destination? Well, this information is easily available on the cdc.gov website. People should check to see if their final destination, domestic or abroad, if there are any travel advisory restrictions with respect to testing or self-quarantining requirements. This applies to all forms of travel, including air travel, train, bus, ships, et cetera. Self-quarantining by and large is usually a 14 day period. And in most cases it's voluntary, but it may be mandatory. So the best thing to do is to check the cdc.gov website. What precautions should a person take when they're traveling? I think that people should be following the public health measures that are currently recommended by the CDC, such as wearing a mask properly fitted. And what I mean properly fitted, I mean covering both the mouth and the nose in public settings, such as airports, trains, and bus stations. People should practice hand sanitation using soap and water or even hand sanitizers that have at least 60% alcohol and avoid touching frequently touch surfaces. One word about the masks, I know a lot of times I see people who wear their mask where they're only covering their nose or they're covering their neck, but exposing their nose and their mouth. I think it's important for people to know that it really doesn't help 
if people are not properly wearing a mask. People need to cover the mouth and their nose at all times, especially when they're in public settings. Good, good advice. Is the air inside an airplane safe? That's, that's a good question. Uh, this has been brought up a lot recently, but current studies um, indicate that these viral infections do not spread easily during air travel because with the current technology, they have found a way to improve the air circulation and air filtration. Having said that, if at all possible, people still need to practice social distancing with physical separation of at least 15 feet or greater. That's still a recommendation. So yes, I think that the air um, inside planes is safe, but people still need to take precautions. And then other than the usual traveling articles and medications, is there anything else in addition I need to pack for to prepare to travel? Well, for sure, people need to pack their mask if they're gonna be in large crowds, such as airports, bus stations, et cetera. In fact, I would recommend packing more than one mask. You never know when you need it and, and your a neighbor or a friend may have forgotten theirs and you can come to their rescue. Uh, I would also recommend packing travel size hand sanitizer bottles and just make sure that the masks and the hand sanitizers are readily available because you never know when you're gonna need them. So I'm gonna digress here a little bit because when you, we talk about the masks, there are all kinds of masks out there right now. There's cotton masks, there's knit masks, there's paper masks, there's N95s, it's just everything. And I'm seeing everything. You know, there's the little pull up Copperfield, I don't wanna advertise for anyone, but the scarf mask. What are your suggestions with the mask? I think the CDC has been very careful to talk about the type of masks that are out there. They talk about face masks. They talk about face coverings. I think when it comes to medical personnel, we have to use a more efficient, better mask, such as the N95. But for the general public, I think that the regular masks and even face coverings should suffice. The main thing is to cover the nose and the mouth at all times. Of, of course, people will have to drink water and grab a bite. Well, you know, obviously they have to remove the mask for that, but any, any other time those masks should be worn. So I understand that we can wear any masks. Should we clean them every time we wear them? If they're cloth, they're washable or? That depends on the person and the usage the frequency of usage. If you're wearing a mask for a long period of time, they may get soiled and uh, they may need to be discarded if they're not capable of being clean. A lot of the cloth masks that I'm seeing now are washable and they can be reused several times. Typically speaking, when you buy a mask, uh, especially a, a cloth mask, they'll give recommendations as to how many times it can be used. They can't be used forever, but they can be used for several occasions. Obviously. The more frequently you use the mask, the more often you should change it. But some people just wear a mask to go shopping or go to the mall or uh, go out to dinner. And those people really don't need to change masks very often. But if you're using masks every day, like, like I do at my job, we have to change masks all the time. So it depends on the frequency, how soiled they get. Everybody's different. Okay. Good information. Are there any special vaccinations or travel medications that a person would need to consider? Well, I wish I could tell you that there's a vaccination for COVID-19 or there's even medication to cure the, uh, the viral infection. But the sad part about it is right now we don't have any current vaccinations or recommended outpatient treatments for COVID-19. However, there are a lot of times when people are traveling ab abroad that vaccinations are either recommended or even required. This is another place where people should go to the cdc.gov website under the travel section and it usually will tell people depending on when they're traveling and where they're going what vaccinations are recommended or even required. And what I think I know the answer to this but I'm going to ask for those that may not. 
Um, I am sure that you promote having a flu shot. If there ever was a year to get a flu shot, this is the year. Okay. And what about pneumovax? I know those are things that we do. Can you kind of give us the guidelines on pneumovax? And Yes, the guidelines have changed a little bit on the pneumonia vaccinations. There are two. One's called the Prevnar 13 and the other is called the pneumovax 23. And depending on how old you are and what medical conditions you have, uh, there are different guidelines pertaining to specific situations. What I would recommend is having people call their healthcare provider and ask them specifically. I said, look, I'm um, 66 years old or I'm diabetic or I have asthma or I don't have a spleen. What should I be doing for vaccinations? And physicians should be able to tell people exactly what vaccinations they require. The other, uh, the other uh, recommendation is to go to the CDC website again, and it gives specific recommendations on who should be getting vaccinations and when. Now, some people do their reservations way in advance. And for those that have made those reservations and, and it's open to travel, are there any problems prior to a pandemic? Well, I think that if people have made their airline reservations a while ago, and people usually do take advantage of discounts, they may want to check with their airline carrier to make sure that their flight reservations are still confirmed as some airlines have either changed or even canceled some previously scheduled flights. Many things happened because of the pandemic, and this is one of them. Shortage of staff, shortage of pilots, uh, people deciding not to travel. Many factors go into this, and some flights were either canceled or, or changed. So it's a good idea to check with your uh, airline carrier. What about people traveling to a area where the altitude is much higher than what they're used to? Should there be any concerns or precautions that need to be taken? Well, there's a condition called high altitude illness that unfortunately some people uh, get. And what I would say is if a person is prone to or at risk for this high altitude illness, they should take a day or two of rest prior to climbing up to the higher altitude. Uh, they should avoid strenuous physical activity, avoid drinking coffee and alcohol since they tend to be dehydrating agents, uh, drinking plenty of water any chance they get. If a person already has a history of high altitude illness, uh, they should consider taking medication for the prevention or even treatment of it. And this is available. Uh, they should consult with their healthcare provider for a prescription or at least advice as to what they should do to either prevent or treat high altitude illness. Okay, great information. It sounds like the preference would be not to travel if you don't have to. Right. I think that Dr. Fauci does give sound advice. Um, I know that uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas are time-honored traditions where people travel. They go to their families. Uh, it's a great time to get together and just have family time and, and fellowship. Unfortunately, we're in a pandemic, probably haven't even seen the worst of it yet. I think Dr. Fauci's advice is, is sound and reasonable. If at all possible, this is one year people may wish to sit out traveling, uh, but Again, if you have to travel, people should take some precautions. So I'm glad that I was able to, to discuss some things with people who have decided that they're going to travel in any case. Dr. Anseldua, I, I want to thank you for coming today. And I'd like to do another uh, session on this next week, if we could do that, because I think you have valuable information to give us um, questions people are wanting to know. And I'd love to talk to you about other than travel, just general illness and, and what we need to do coming up into the winter months. So if you would join me next week, I would love to do this with you again. Is there anything else you'd like to tell us today before we end? No, I think we covered a lot of ground today. And yes, I'd be more than happy to, uh, to come back next week and try to answer some more questions that you may have. Wonderful. Well, I want to thank you, Dr. Anseldua, for joining us today, 
and a big thank you to our listeners for tuning in. Beginning now, Senate intention and a relentless focus on living your life as the greatest person you can be in all situations. Please join us next week as Dr. Ansel Dua is graciously joining us again to talk about COVID and through the holidays. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today on Oak Bend Medical Center Happy Hour Podcast. We hope you enjoyed today's broadcast and invite you to email us at oakbendhappyhourpodcast at obmc.org with any questions or topics that you would like for us to cover. Remember, you can find us here each Friday at 5. Until next week, be mindful and stay healthy.